Hi, Sergio here with GJD3D and uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to use our uh, Pave tools. Uh, we're going to going to show you how our Pave diamond tool works and then how to put the prongs in and uh, and then how to also array the cutter with the stone onto the circles and to get the Pave completed. Uh, so uh, let's get started. I'm going to Give you a quick demo on the top surface here and then i'm also going to do it on these uh panels on the side of the ring here and i'll show you what the result will be as you can see i've already done it on here around the, the square stone so let me let's uh let's hide the things that i don't need right now so it makes it easier for you to see so get all this stuff here and hide there we go and uh here's grasshopper and I already have the definition loaded. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So uh, notice the first thing I need to do, step one, is to select the surface for the pavé. In this case, I don't have a surface. All I have is a closed uh, perimeter. So I'll start by selecting that as the surface and again as the curve. Uh, then I have a choice here on how uh, I'm going to select my diamond size, which are, they're pretty small. This is a very small pave with very small stones. Uh, they are 1.5 in size. So let me see, almost there. Let me take this away here to zero. There we go. And 1.5, there we go. Here are my 1.5 stones. Now, uh, because of the shape that I have here, uh, it's not being able to figure it out very well here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it that it's a, uh, a free form, uh, edges type of a surface, free form with four edges. It's gonna put a bunch of stones here that I don't need, but you know, I can very easily just highlight and delete them afterwards. Uh, so now I have my 1.5 diamonds over here uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, figuring out my uh, notice here the gap they're overlapping a little bit so I'm gonna start working with uh, the gaps over here maybe right this one's kind of very good right there and then this one here we got to start giving them a little bit of space maybe something around there maybe a little bit more in here. No, let me go here so I can keep. There we go, that looks pretty good. Then these are inside, those are right to the edge there. Got those here, these are extra. Now any stones that end up being outside, I'll delete manually. So now that I have the, the pavé set up, you know, all I have to do is to bake these circles. So I'll go ahead and bake them into my guides layer and click OK. And uh, now I can close this definition. Uh, I don't need to save anything there. And there, there's all my baked uh, circles. So I'm going to go ahead and delete the unneeded ones, which are the ones that are sticking out of my shape. So here's my... Uh, preliminary starting point. So now I can delete this here. Here we go. And uh, now I need to take uh, this guy here and put it all over those circles there. So uh, I'm gonna go to wireframe so you guys can see this clearly. Notice that there's a stone in there and a cutter here. So let me load up the document for our stones. Here we go. So here I have the definition for, for orienting. So uh, all I need to do is select the circular 2D reference, set one curve, and that is referring to this blue circle around my stone. Then the objects to orient, select multiple geometries. That'll be the cutter and the stone, enter. And finally, I need to select the target 
circles. So I'll go ahead and pick multiple curves. And there they are. As you can see, I am so I have them on uh, box tracking for quick and fast preview. If I want to see the full tracking, I just put it back to full tracking preview and it will show me exactly what it's doing. It's creating the meshes now, so we got to give it a second. There we go. We can see our stone inside and the cutter on each one of those stones to create our holes on the on the on the ring and once we get to this point we can go ahead and bake so bake all these are going to be I can put this in gems and click OK and there's all my cutters and gems uh, baked and I'll go ahead and close this definition no, don't save anything. Get Grasshopper up there. Now I'll go ahead and bring back the ring. And now I can go ahead and do my uh, Boolean difference. I'm going to go ahead and come to this view here. Maybe here will be better. Here we go. I'm going to do a Boolean difference from this ring, enter, let's remove all these guys, enter, there we go, now we go and take a look at our ring in perspective, and let's see what we have here, now the next step, I'm going to go ahead and go to gems and hide them, you know, so that I can work with the next step, in this case, I can get rid of this already. Okay, I can hide it. Let's hide that. And now we'll go ahead and open up the one for the prongs. And here it is, prongs. Now, in this case, it's probably better if I have a just a plain flat surface underneath. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and draw just a rectangular surface here. Move it under there and ignore this. Just don't use this one. Here we go. And I'm going to select the guide. Then I'm going to select the reference. And then the circles. Now notice that it's showing me the prongs. I'm going to tell it not to, to sell, show me only preview, only circles, and and that just shows me the little circles, so it, everything works really fast. Uh, now the first thing I see there is the height. So I'm going to find down here for the height of all the prongs and bring that down to like 0.5 because this is going to be for rendering. So I really don't need a lot of prong on top. So there we go. Then I'm going to make sure that they are lined up correctly. I can probably, uh, let me lock this so it looks gray and we can see much better. Now here, all I have to do now is configure how I want these two prongs. So the first one, uh, there it is. I can make it go to that center point there. And the second one, Maybe right around there. Now, obviously, I'm going to, when I'm done, I might need to copy some in some places. But as you can see, every gap between every stone is being covered right now. You know? And these guys are slightly big. So I'm going to go ahead and change the, the radius for all prongs. Make them maybe a little smaller. And maybe have them be a little bit less inside the stone there. Here we go. Notice that you have a lot of control on all of this. So uh, now that I have this uh, little pave there configured really nicely. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and tell it to preview the, the actual uh, prongs. There they are, little stubby prongs. And I'll go ahead and uh, bake all the prongs. Go to the prongs layer, click OK. It's going to work for a few seconds there. And now I got all my prongs. Let me go ahead and go to File and close this. The grasshopper out of the way there. This surface did its job, so I'm going to unlock it. I can delete it. And now all I have to do, if I need to copy any prongs anywhere, I can do that now. So I might be, I might want to select these and copy and bring them over to this side just to make it all uh, equal. You know, and, and things like this. Maybe I want these guys uh, over here. Maybe worth on. Take away the snap so it doesn't snap to anything. And I also might want to bring back the ring and see exactly what's happening here so I can. So now all I have to do is just copy a few that are left uh, that are still missing and uh, I'll be ready to then move on to do the, these parts over here. to get the ring finished.